we end up with, after the relatively simple derivation, is a partial differential equation, which is just the heat equation from physics. And there is a complete closed form solution for that. Uh, we define D1 and D2. And um, the price of the option is given here. C of S and T is S N of D1 minus K to the power of R, R T N of D2. N of D1 and N of D2, that's the only point that I want to mention. As you can tell, a closed form solution is basically a one statement line. Except that N of D1 and N of D2 are the cumulated normal distribution function. Now, cumulative normal distribution function, I thought it's no big deal. There are enough books with uh, numerical approximation. You look there's some, some polynomial approximation. You look like third or fourth order polynomial. And it's again another statement in the program. And you get the uh, cumulative normal distribution. And after fiddling with it for about two weeks, I realized that speak easy has a statement called Gauss which gives you the cumulative normal distribution. So the whole thing was kind of redundant to show that the, the vocabulary is really immense. And you have to be careful not to reinvent the wheel when you use uh, SpeakEasy. There's a lot in there already. So the whole program is really reduced to one line statement, uh, which is just a solution here. Uh, a slightly more complicated thing is to price an option using the binomial tree methodology. And um, This is a binomial tree, and maybe I should digress a little bit and explain something about the assumption of stock movement uh, prices. What, um, what we assume, if this is a time axis and this is a stock, we assume that there is some kind of trend, hopefully going up, otherwise no one will buy the stock, uh, of appreciation in the price of the stock. But on top of them, the, on top of the trend, there is a Brownian motion. Okay. And the Brownian motion has a mean of zero. So in other words, it, in this picture, of course, it doesn't look as if the mean is zero. It looks as if the mean is far above the trend. But supposedly, the long-term trend it should show a mean of zero with some variance. And the variance is an indication how much this fluctuation, how big are these fluctuations around the mean of the stock. So how can we model it in a simple uh, numerical form? The simplest form is a binomial tree. In the binomial tree, that we, we assume that at each point in time, when we have a price of the stock, S0, we can either go up or go down with some probability. And if we go down, we have a multiplying factor of D. If we go up, we have a multiplying factor of U. And we keep on doing it now we are at this point in time. We can go up or we can go down. And one assumption of the binomial tree is that if we go down and then up, it's the same thing as if we go up and then down. OK. So we have here up and a down. And after two periods, we end up with a certain series of stock prices. Um, the binomial tree now, this interval, if it's too large, of course, we have an error in, in, in our uh, estimation of the stock price. If the interval is very small, the, uh, the approximation of the call or the put will be much, will be greatly improved. The problem, of course, is that uh, the more steps we take, take, the longer it takes to compute it. Um, one thing that, that uh, the way we do it usually is this. We, we start with today's stock price. We compute these final prices, given the D and the U, and, the, and then suppose that the final prices, and I'll just follow the example before that we had a stock of a, a uh, we had an exercise price of 110. Suppose the final prices will be 120, 110, and 90. What will be the payoff on the calls? Here we'll get a payoff of zero. Here we'll get a payoff of zero. Here we'll get a payoff of ten. So the tree, we end up with a tree of three prices for the call. Zero, zero, ten. And then we digress backwards. Suppose we have a a probability of one half of each occurrence going up or going down. So at this point, the call should cross five. At this point, the call should point zero. And we go back one more step, probability half of going up and half of going down, we end up with a price of $2.5 for the call. This is the procedure that we go through with the binomial tree. Now, usually, there are a lot of indices involved. And it's kind of tedious to keep track because the tree shrinks in size. Very difficult. But it turns out that if we define two matrices, one matrix, uh, I just call Q-max there, 